hi guys welcome to today's vlog i hope you're doing fine and your weekend is coming along well so i thought i could share with you this information because looking back i wish someone had given me this information before i came back for my postgraduate studies but a quick reminder and a word of appreciation to those that have subscribed to my channel thank you so much it means a lot even though the audio and the image quality are not so good thank you for subscribing and then to those that haven't yet a quick request kindly subscribe to my channel so the first thing that i think is so important if you are planning to go back for your second degree in this case a postgraduate is cash so if you're planning to go back for a science related course like my case you should have an average of 200k or two thousand dollars roughly so if you're budgeting if you're saving if you are obtaining a scholarship that's the rough budget but in between there are costs for photocopying for internet research for printing for buying material reading material so if you have the 200 those other costs are like miscellaneous but 200 is good because roughly first year is 120 second year is around 80 so roughly that and then secondly which i didn't know there is a pass mark like you see the way in undergraduate we used to have a pass mark of a d which was a 40 i think in postgraduate there is also a pass mark and in our case it's a b guys you can't get below a b to go to the next tier which brings me to my third point choose a course that is manageable you are not trying to impress anyone in your postgraduate degrees you are doing it for your own good so it is advisable you choose a course that is related to what you did in your undergraduate degrees that makes the transition much much easier for instance in my case i pursued environmental science for my undergraduate degree right now i am pursuing environmental and occupational health so different courses but they are quite related it makes the transition easy because almost all the courses that i am encountering right now i encountered them in my undergraduate degree so even if you have to read twice as hard even if the workload is twice as much it is not as hard to pass as if you are doing as in the case of if you are pursuing a different course and then thirdly there is this issue of how is it really like like forget the prestige forget the hype how is masters really like so for one the classes are less crowded <laughs> like when your undergraduate you used to have a class of 500 1000 in this case we are four like in my class right now we are four so the classes are way less crowded. Then secondly, your cosmates are way more mature, not like the way you are in your undergraduate studies. And then the exams, there are no definitions. It's purely application. By the way, in masters, that's why it's called masters, you are really, really mastering that concept you see the way in undergraduate you used to <laughs> you get a handout you cram one touch exam in akuja una download and you forget about it in masters it's purely application that knowledge that you are acquiring you are applying it in your workplace in your day-to-day -day life and things like that let me give you an example there is a unit I'm undertaking called Legal Framework for Occupational Health. This unit, the course structure, it consists of five laws and regulations, acts and regulations from the Constitution. P 
purely dealing with occupational health. Now, the format of the exam is such that they don't ask you to state the law or the regulation. This is what happens. According to section 6 of this, of maybe, let me say, the Labor Regulations or the Labor Institution Act or regulations, the Constitution requires a, a trade union to be registered as such and such and such, isn't it? Okay, then the question comes, in your opinion, why should this trade union be registered? You see, so in the law, they are saying requirements for registration. But in the question, why should it be registered? Okay, I'm just trying to give you a picture that in most questions, it is not a direct word for word. No. The lecturers are simply trying to understand if you have grasped the concept from what they have taught you. So, which I think is much, much better than those exams where you have to give definitions and things like that. I think it's much, much better. And then also, you can't, you can't, okay. When I was starting my master's degree, I had gotten a job offer. Okay, not a permanent job, but an internship in a certain company. And I chose to postpone the internship till I finish my first year. That is my coursework. And then I can take up the opportunity. But then during the course of my study, I have encountered several people who are saying, once you start your master's, it is advisable to finish. And this is the reason. When you apply for a job that requires you to have a master's degree, you can't offer, you can't produce your certificate if you have not completed your master's degree. As in, just finishing your coursework alone does not warrant you to be given a master's degree. So you can't really write you've graduated for your master's degree. You get. So it's advisable, even if you've finished your coursework, if you can, finish the whole thing before you now get out. But again, there is reality. Sometimes the project part of your master's is quite expensive. Or sometimes you might find that you haven't found a suitable supervisor, which happens. There are those projects where in a certain institution you may miss an appropriate supervisor. So in such cases, you can't just change your topic so that you finish and go. You can wait. So as you're waiting, you can look for an alternative means of income as you wait. So there, it's quite relative. It's advisable, yes, to finish once you've started. But if the circumstance does not allow, that is if you're looking for funds for your research and you haven't gotten a scholarship, it's advisable to step back first and then work on getting those funds. And then finally, the project. The project is, there is no master's without a project. And for those students, which that is what I can speak for, those students who are pursuing master's degrees in science-related courses, right from the day you step in your first lesson of your master's class, start thinking and start looking where you your passion lies, the things that interest you, the things that intrigue you, and along those circles, look for a topic or a suitable topic for presentation as your proposal. Because... When you finish your first year, part of the exam requirements is that you must have submitted a project proposal which you will defend at the departmental level. So, akuna mchezo. Think along those lines and get a topic before you finish your first year. So that for your second year, you'll just come back to work on what you had submitted in the first year. So, basically, for now, that is all I have. I hope it has helped one or two people. I hope my voice has improved. I hope my energy has improved. 
and overall i just hope i have helped someone thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for subscribing and until next time see ya